So good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, and a very warm welcome to this live virtual session brought to you by People Matters and Repute. I am Dhruv, a content manager with People Matters, and it will be my privilege to welcome you all to this exciting discussion and be your host for the day. I would like to thank each and every one of you for taking out the time and for joining us in this exclusive discussion, which has been curated by our partner Repute. Today, the discussion and the focus of our uh, topic is going to be the, uh, the aspect of open talent networks and how open talent networks are actually redefining talent management. To give you a brief understanding of open talent management, we, we, we will be looking into how blockchain technologies and principles of Web 3.0 have led to the creation of talent networks which are open and help facilitate the, share, the sharing of information. It's fast reshaping how we work, interact, and collaborate. Right from establishing intra-system connectivity within organizations to avoid siloed nature of working, to providing them with infrastructure to access a whole gamut of services, Open Talent Network actually helps HR leaders get access to full-time talent, freelancers, recruiters, interviewers, background verification agency, all at the click of a button. In its current shape and form, Open Talent Networks are providing industry-wide salary insights, smart offer rollouts, reliable background and skills verification, dependable referrals, and instant third-party verifications. All these and much more will be explored in our conversation today. So before I move ahead, I would like to introduce one of our first panelists, Mr. Deepak Dhar, CEO and co-founder of Repute Networks. Deepak has been involved in the startup ecosystem from the start of his career. He played a pivotal role and was a, and was in a part of the founding team at Citrus Pay, which was later acquired by PayU. Deepak was also the co-founder of India's largest house rental startup, Nestle. The idea of building more trust between two transacting entities and was conceived during his stint at Nestle, and thus Repute was born. Repute is a Bangalore-based company that is using blockchain technologies and principles of Web 3.0 to establish an open talent network. Rep uh, Deepak would initially give a short presentation to us, which will help explore the nuances of an open talent network and its impact on talent management. Welcome, Deepak, and it's great to have you today with us. Thank you, Dhruv. It's my pleasure to be here, uh, to be able to present something which we believe is going to reshape a uh, lot of things that are going to come. And India has already led the way in this in one sense. Like uh, with UPI, we have created a payments network, which is right now talk of the world. Uh, we are already talking about creating other networks uh, within the finance systems, which is like account aggregator uh, system, which is connecting the banks and allowing a flow of bank information between say banks and whoever uh, need to access the banking information it's also now we have open network for digital commerce that is being uh, built which is helping the buyers and sellers connect to each other without really coming to so this topic of uh, creating or moving towards networks is something which is uh, where india is i believe leading the world and is is uh, the same place where we believe we should also have we also have a great opportunity to use the network uh, say model to reshape how talent uh, entire life cycle of talent management is uh, conducted in that so to begin with i think we will share the what is open network because uh, that's generally the first question Definitely. when we are talking to people what is difference between what is changing what are we talking about here so i'd, I'd like to uh, just give a very brief presentation on what we believe is uh, open network and how uh, we should uh, look at it. Uh, if we have to talk today, let's say uh, each one of us had to come on this platform and uh, had to log in into the same application and then we are able to talk to each other. Same would have been, let's say we wanted to have a video call with each other and we needed to be on zoom or say microsoft teams but everybody had to be on the same application we are talking about it is not possible that my company's preferred application is teams and somebody else's preferred application is zoom and uh, both the parties can be on their own preferred application and still uh, communicate with each other uh, but that was not how emails were 
if you look at it emails are uh, if i was in gmail or somebody else is in outlook i can still send email from gmail to outlook it is not restricting me uh, that everybody has to be on the same email imagine if that was the case that everybody in the world was asked like either if, if you're not on the same system then you can't really communicate or send emails to each other uh, but that's exactly the kind of system we have in almost every other ecosystem if you look at it uh, we have to be on each other's application to be able to uh, say conduct any business or communicate or uh, interact in any way so this is the difference between what we call a, a application or a closed system or something which is an open uh, network uh, where different applications are connected to each other uh, now different applications connecting to each other has various levels of connectivity that can happen the first level definitely is a closed system that everybody comes on the same system and then everybody is present in the same system and i logged in from one side you logged in from the other side and then we are able to talk to each other now we go to the next level is probably a connected system i have an application and uh, i have a vendor whom we have uh, say spoken to and we have done a custom integration with them and then these two application can now talk to each other but i haven't really tried to make any specific uh, effort that uh, my system can talk to all the systems now next layer of openness can come so second layer was just from closed system we are moved to partner system we can say that we have connected with the partner systems that we had created and everybody have their own set of partners and uh, so this will be a smaller version of this or you can say point to point uh, uh, say telephone network that me and you have a uh, say leaves hotline where we can connect to each other but not necessarily a generic uh, connection on that next layer can come up to is which is open systems so we went ahead and we created apis for our systems and we have floated in the market that anybody who wants to connect to our system this is the um, apis are open for our system and you can connect to our system we have opened this now what happens with this is let's say uh, the various banks started doing this and icic bank did let's say hdfc bank did and some and each one of have their own apis and then if a merchant wants to connect to let's say the banks to accept payment from a user what he'll have to do is he'll have to go and integrate with all 50 banks individually because each one of them have a different setup and that's why payment gateways came in between which said that yes let me do this work of integrating with all 50 of them and so that you just connect to me and then i know how to go to each one of them so this is next level from just partners connecting to each other we are saying is i have already given open apis or i have given my apis but uh, there is no standardization of apis everybody has their own set of apis so the next level is where you are talking about the network level where not just my apis are open we have also there is a standard that have been established that this is the api everybody has implemented same set of apis and there is a protocol for that like uh, the first field will be the name second field will be probably uh, the id or third field will be something else so everybody knows what is the uh, interaction that is going to be and you can build systems accordingly this is where we'll talk about all these networks we have uh, whether we call it initially uh, we have visa as a payments network existing over a period of time we are talking about now upi and account aggregator and ondc in india so these are the open networks uh, next level we can talk about is uh, this is still systems where i think people are doing a transaction with each other uh, in a manner where a buyer and a seller uh, can interact with each other uh, apart from transaction data if the reputation data is also flowing with that that what kind of a person am i talking about uh, is it reliable person is it quality not just the quantity the aspect of it also flows through it then we are talking about what we call the reputation networks which is probably one step ahead uh, going beyond this uh, uh, one of the features of reputation network would be the competitors can also speak to each other or the competitive systems can speak to each other let's say uh, i am a buyer and uh, i can speak to other buyers for the uh, same service to get to know about how has been the behavior of this particular service provider or similarly service providers can speak to each other to get to know how has been a particular buyer in the past banking ecosystem has done that as well by creating credit bureaus uh, not just transacting system but have also created credit bureau where they also have the behavior part of uh, the uh, say user or consumer also captured somewhere so this is taking it to the next level so what would change if we are talking about this so we are talking about that this is our conventional way of doing business there is a consumer i have i am a, a company and i have a system i have asked probably my vendors to log into my system 
to provide service. I have an ERP system and I've asked my suppliers, you have to log into my ERP system, then only we work. Otherwise, we can't work. Both of us have to be on the same system. That was probably one way. Second might be that uh, the service provider has given an application where you are logging in. Let's say an insurance company says, this is my application, log into my application, and then you can access these features. So every company who has bought, uh, say, uh, insurance from them, they will have to log in and then they will have to manage their policies going there. Or third mechanism was where both the parties met at a third party's platform, which is probably the marketplaces that became that. Uh, somebody is getting all the insurance companies also on one side and also is getting the uh, employers on one side and this is the place where insurance companies and or somebody is getting all the merchants and all the buyers and they are meeting or drivers or riders and they're meeting at the same place this still requires all three of them are places where we are going to a different system my preference of system might be anything but because where uh, the other party is based on that either i have to get the party there or i have to move to the uh, if we talk about how uh, we can move how does the network works is i am using the email that i want so my application is this i am a hr manager my preferred application is let's say uh, one hrms and i am in that particular hrms i don't want to or why do i need to go to different service provider systems uh, to probably uh, buy services or say manage my services uh, whether it is insurance whether that is uh, maybe recruitment or any of those services. So we, I stay in my system, others stay in their systems and our systems can speak to each other, which is probably a way that on the internet, I have my agent and uh, the other party has its agent and these agents can speak to each other. It is not necessarily that either I have to go to your house or you have to come to my house. We can directly connect to each other over phone and where I still continue to be in my house and you can be in your house and still we can do business on that. So this is uh, what we call about the promise of networks rather than uh, just the applications. Uh, how does it look like if you talk about, so it might be that there's a, a HR systems, the HR managers systems are uh, maybe the HR MS and they, that is their control system for basically everything that they require to manage the entire talent uh, uh, process that they have. And this system is also connected to, let's say, uh, banks. The payroll is connected to the various banks also, so that now I can manage my payroll directly into uh, on the banks. It is not necessary that I have to log into the bank website to really manage my services. Or my system can connect to uh, maybe a lending partner who is giving earned wage access to my employees. Again, I do not have to go to them uh, to say that these are my employees and you can provide them services, etc. They can continue to be at their side. We, the, the employment system can be continue to be using their own system. The same thing can go in insurance where uh, somebody is uh, getting all the insurance providers and probably you are talking about uh, the HRMS uh, becomes continues to be your systems and can be for professionals, which is I need a chartered accountant or a designer or some consultants or lawyers or various services within the company, we can still take that also. And they continue to be using whatever systems they are using. Like a classic example for a finance system might be, the chartered accountant wants to use his tally system, They because that's where they are. Uh, but as a business user, I am using one of my systems, which might be anything else, with, which my chartered accountant is not comfortable with. Now, either I have to move to his system or he has to move to my system, so it would have been the closed systems uh, paradigm. Uh, chartered accounting using his tally and I using, let's say, my uh, Zoho books. I, that is something which is we uh, where both of us are comfortable and we continue to do this. So equivalent of that is the same as the recruiters. Each of the recruiters can keep running their own systems and we uh, at talent, we can continue to use the system that we have as long as these systems are connected and the various applications are present for that. So how would this change anything uh, if, if systems can speak to each other rather than we having to go to different systems? Uh, I think the first part that we are talking about is the best in class interoperable applications. So today we have uh, a trade off that we have. If we try to go for best in class applications, uh, then it's it's very difficult that one person who started building uh, say talent acquisition is also going to build the core HRIS, is also going to build the best payroll, is also going to build probably the best performance management system. So either we have to take a, a trade-off in terms of that we settle for what our preferred vendors have built, 
or we do is if we have to go with best of class that is available in the market then the interoperability becomes a challenge like across these systems don't talk to each other we're managing the same data across multiple systems so one is this uh, we can have best in class systems still they'll be interoperable if we are working on networks uh, second is ecosystem level collaboration like today uh, uh, simple application which is background verification now we assign the background verification tasks our new employee joins us and this a task is assigned to probably a third party agency third party agency somehow reaches out to the past employer and asks them uh, if does this employee work with you did he have a clean exit and all those things and then brings back the same report submits to the new employer now between these two steps the past employer is also if is also on the network new employer is also on the network it's almost like sending an email to each other which routes itself automatically to the past employers concerned person and concerned person can even set up an auto respond to it that I don't want to waste my time in responding to these uh, queries which are coming to I know my data can be fetched from the H my HR system and can be auto responded or if you want to uh, say do it in a manner where you want to review and respond every request you can choose to do that so that again it's an ecosystem level collaboration uh, we can say the third is cross ecosystem collaboration where uh, I am uh, say as soon as a new employee joins and my insurer is updated on that from my system itself, from HLMS, that this new employee has joined, please add him and his dependents to the uh, insurance or group policy that is there. Then goes to uh, the fourth is the individuals themselves. Like when we were talking about, uh, there was a promise of a professional network which was created, let's say a LinkedIn would be, that uh, it is not just a resume, it is resume plus connections. Over a period of time, these resume plus connections have got diluted because connections today, most of the people when we are uh, talking to them, majority of the connections are people whom you don't really know. So the, the concept that just by seeing my connections, I can judge what is a person talking or who is the person uh, has become slightly diluted. Now, if we have again something like this, where I can actually carry my personal credentials with me, uh, it's very easy for when I'm trying to go and uh, talk to uh, anybody else in the ecosystem to prove my credentials and get to this. So these are some things which are very, very possible when we are moving towards a network approach rather than a system approach where all the data continues to lie in the silos. Of course, there's a lot of challenge in this, uh, which is related to security and privacy and everything else, which is why uh, fortunately a technology has evolved uh, where we did not have this technology of uh, blockchain or distributed ledger uh, probably five years ago. And now we have a technology which allows, uh, say, collaboration across people who are otherwise competing with each other or have uh, uh, privacy concerns or security concerns with each other. So uh, that's the high level on what open networks can uh, be useful for managing the talent ecosystem. Yeah, and uh, thank you, Deepak, actually, for actually not just taking us through the different steps of how networks have evolved, but also contextualizing it for a very, uh, for an HR framework of how these tools can actually be leveraged by HR leaders in creating impactful solutions for their employees. So thank you for that. Uh, so moving ahead, I would like to invite our second panelist, uh, Mr. Vinay Agrawal, Global Head of Business HR at Tech Mahindra. Vinay comes with a vast demonstrated experience and has been leading the HR business partner function and for the IT business of Tech Mahindra globally. He has also led the region HR of for all geographies other than North America and Europe. Prior to the current HR role, he's led he's led the delivery excellence of Sigma Six and other models for over a decade. Welcome, Vinay, and it's glad I'm glad to have you on this conversation. Thank you very much, Sir. So just a uh, uh, note to the audience, uh, if you have any questions during the session as we explore different aspects of talent management and open talent networks, please uh, put your questions on the chat box and we will take them up once the conversation has ended. So stay tuned and let's hope for a good insightful discussion. So starting, starting off this conversation, uh, Vinay and Deepak, I would like to address a question to both of you, and maybe Deepa can go first, and then Vinay, you can take this on. We've seen uh, the post-pandemic world of work change significantly from what it was 
three years back. But across the different changes, what would you say has been one of the most pivotal changes when it comes to talent management? What was one factor that you see has reshaped talent management to the largest extent? Deepak, you can go first and then we can have the new little suggestions. Um, I'm sure Vinay is way more qualified on this. Uh, I have taken most of it from uh, our conversations when we are speaking to a lot of HR practitioners that what is changing and how it is impacting this. Uh, and one of the main concerns that have continued to come out is just because of pandemic has one uh, that everybody is present in the site and because of that there is a level of trust and everything that is created on which is which is getting which is changing now because people are not really not everybody is in office not at least not every day in office uh, the trend of remote work and uh, probably hybrid work is going to stay on that and this creates a set of challenges uh, not just in management, also of engagement uh, for employees. Uh, so from the HR point of view, it is directly, definitely coming to that, that how do we manage a workforce which is not necessarily always present with you and you can physically approach them and uh, condition the environment to get the impact or the effects that you want. Second is from an employee's perspective, I think the expectation uh, of what they want from their jobs I think has evolved a lot. It's not just about that I'm going there to earn my uh, money or something else. There's a lot more suddenly people have uh, become aware of that uh, it's, it's life can be uh, very fickle and uh, uh, the needs from their, uh, say, professional career has or expectation from their professional careers have changed a lot. So I think these are changes which uh, are going to be significant and uh, we will need a very agile approach from uh, HR practitioners to probably manage uh, the work as well as the uh, employee's expectation. So, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So, so Deepak, Deepak is bang on. <laughs> I just try to basically add some um, context to it and some, some final details. See, basically, the pan a pandemic, to, to my experience, has brought a very fundamental shift. So when people are working together in a workplace, a uh, lot of things are taken care of by human dynamics. Now, uh, so the, the hybrid work uh, culture, uh, uh, hybrid work model that I think uh, globally, every company is, um, and I'm more in the context of IT, uh, because manufacturers, uh, companies, and most of the other industries are basically back to normal, but IT is going to remain hybrid. So in a hybrid environment where at any moment, uh, very unlikely that all your colleagues or teammates would be together. Uh, so the, the basically the, the magic or basically the human dynamics will never be 100% at play. So the trust factor, which is which is basically the whole genesis of the whole team play uh, collaboration or whatever we say. So that is to be that is no more. You can't take it for granted. You have to constantly build that, nurture that. It is said in the fraternity in different words. Um, I mean, basically inclusiveness or uh, employee experience. But the point is that the trust is uh, requires a lot more intentional effort which in a nutshell i can say that has to be constantly nurtured by human endeavor plus enabled by technology and that's where i think the deep of open uh, network that he's talking about so technology is enabling that constant um, uh, i would say constant nurturing of the trust but from human side perspective uh, there's a lot of talk happening that empathetic leadership so leadership also has to evolve leaders have to really uh, make sure that they always are conscious of inclusiveness, which means in a very simple term, let's say if I'm having a, as a leader, I'm having a team uh, meeting of 30 people, 15 people who are remotely uh, joined the meeting, I have to make conscious of to make sure that their opinions are also heard. Exactly. So in a nutshell, I would say what has changed is that trust cannot be taken for granted anymore, which was earlier the, the human dynamic was taking care of it subconsciously. It was happening automatically, a majority of it. In the change, in the new scenario, that trust has to be constantly uh, nurtured by 
by a basically much more empathetic leadership on a human aspect and enabled by technology. Open networks is one example, and there are HCMs, uh, how the conversation happens. So people are talking about mail getting redundant and more contemporary form interactions on chat, etc. So, Dhruv, uh, this is what um, you know, my uh, experience has been the, the main shift from pre pandemic to post pandemic. And it may be irreversible, at least for IT industry. I can see that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh... Deepak and Vinay for highlighting those points. And Vinay, I really like that you took a step back and addressed trust as a key component which has shifted because not a, a lot of people would just look at the symptoms but not the cause. And I think uh, looking at trust as an important factor is very important in today's uh, world, yeah. be it hybrid or be it you know where people are moving back to office. Also. That actually sets up uh, for our next question, Deepak. And you explored this. Uh, you explored this certainly in the presentation that you gave us. But how do you think these challenges, and especially the aspect of building trust that uh, Vinay mentioned, how do you think open talent networks can equip HR leaders to address some of those problems today? I think uh, trust is Vinay has absolutely put it uh, right as that the trust is an important factor. Uh, which was for granted in a physical world. It is not just the talent ecosystem. It's for any commerce also. Like I, if I'm walking into a shop, a lot of the uh, trust evoking factors were that there's a shop, you're not going to run away from here. Uh, probably there is some give thing, things which are in the shop which are giving you, yes, I, I can trust this person, etc. So a lot of physical aspects used to give uh, cues to us where which used to automatically tell us that I can trust this or not trust this. Not necessarily all of them were right, but at least we emotionally used to feel that yes, I can I can go ahead with this. Now with a lot of those physical cues missing, how do we trust uh, somebody else? Now trust, I would say, is a forward-looking activity. That today you are saying, can I rely on this guy for something that I'm trying to do for future? Reputation is something which is used as a trust mechanism in general. Reputation is the backward looking thing. Like, what do people say about me? Like, if this job is given to Deepak, will Deepak finish it? Based on the past experience of uh, such tasks which have been there, I have never interacted with, say, this person. But based on other people's interaction with him in the past, it has come out if this work is given to Deepak, Deepak is going to finish. So the reputation of Deepak to be able to finish this, yeah. First time when I'm interacting this gives me the trust that I can go ahead with this, which earlier was very much dependent on the physical cues which I was getting when I was interacting with Deepak, I was working with Deepak, uh, maybe uh, I was just swinging by, I was seeing him in cafeteria, a lot of those things used to work out based on those. Now, I do not have those cues, so I'm taking up cues from uh, something which gives me more systemic approach towards what is the reputation of various people for various things and the reputation is the angle that is giving us trust so there are two parts one is uh, when we are talking about networks especially blockchain based networks it eliminates the need of trust at some places where you're saying i'm not going to do uh, uh, i don't have to trust like when the goods are delivered the payments will be uh, released automatically that those are the kind of things but in human uh, behaviors, etc., that's not how it works. It works on reputations, which is you cannot eliminate the need for trust, but you have to create trust. And trust is largely for us is through reputations. What we call for others, it is brand. We can put it out that brand is basically a reputation that you have created. Now we need to have a brand at every individual level. Every individual need to have its own brand. Uh, and that is what is going to, if I have a brand of certain things, I'm going to do my work, I'm going to be, I have told my things correctly, this is what, uh, and, and that is what is going to change how trust is going to be created and managed going forward. And every interaction should then uh, add to this reputation over a period of time, which is uh, that if I do something wrong today, this is not going away. This is probably getting added to my reputation and tomorrow somebody else will also be able to access this uh, part and so there's a shadow of this being cast on my future so my incentives to uh, behave in an honorable manner continue to be high even if we are not physically meeting even if i don't have to ever face you uh, again but we continue so that is where i believe like open networks are required to create the immediate reputation that is should create such a trust a very simple example would be when a new employee is coming uh, where did I work in the past, where I have gone to school or college, etc. That should be something if I can really query from the network. 
I already know. Let's say I cannot query the network from my exact educational institute, but my past employer and my past to past employers told yes, Deepak has gone to so and so educational institute. Now my new employer can trust the past three or four employers are saying that Deepak has gone to this. I don't have to go back and verify that again. So that what is your level of trust will change. Some places it is compliance requirement that I have to do it myself. Some places it's just a trust requirement that can I believe this to go ahead? And if I can believe my peers in the industry for some information, good enough. I'll go ahead with that. That is uh, what a reputation network can help on that. So sure. thank you, thank you, Deepak. And I like the point that collaboration has become trust and repu reputation do become the bedrock for collaboration. And you know, as HR systems try to become more agile, we require faster and more responsive uh, talent network to an extent to sort of help HR leaders create that ability. So thank you for that, Deepak. Uh, my next question to you, Vinay, is we explored the digital tools aspect of you know addressing some of the challenges that uh, the post-pandemic world has faced. But for any digital tool or a digital first strategy, you need HR leaders who have the right mindset, the skills and perspectives to implement those tools and work with those tools. So what would you say are some of the core necessary factors right now that HR leaders should look at before trying to go for a digital first or a, or a digital tool and enable HR strategy? So Drew, I, um... <clears throat> Okay, let me take a cue from what Deepak said. Um, so individuals are getting empowered and each individual is becoming in some sense in enterprise. They have their yep. own reputation, they have their own history, they uh, and people make an assessment of what this person may be capable of, etc. So uh, at workplace also, uh, you know, the individuality has really grown. There's a lot of empowerment. So command and control, or or basically different variations, different degrees of that uh, that many leaders have enjoyed. That there's a great shift, right? So people need to be treated with lot lot more autonomy. And autonomy has always been one of the factors people like, but um, in the new, which is lot more flexible environment, uh, the employees, the, the workers are a lot more autonomous. That need to be recognized. So that's a big shift. So uh, leaders have to basically uh, accept the fact that people have choices and uh, they need to be treated with a lot, lot more autonomy. There, and, and also uh, basically, you know, what uh, Satya Nadella says, great reshuffle. So there is a philosophical change. So it, there's not a tactical change of really where you work from. There's a philosophical change in terms of the people are have tasted a very different uh, way of life and they have questions saying that do we really have to work that way do we really have to work uh, 10 hours every day etc uh, you can make use of the so much flexibility being offered by organizations so the the personal and professional both lives have to be respected those which bring to the point in that nutshell the leaders need to be a lot more empathetic and I was just trying to basically visualize what you mean by empathetic and what are the implication manifestation of that term. So leaders have to have ability to really uh, empathize in terms of what the person might be going through, what the person might be having, the personal priorities and professional priorities, how to make a, a good combination of that and, and basically have build a relationship with a clear understanding of what is you know acceptable, what is not acceptable, what is expected, etc. What are the area there's a flexibility? What are the area there's no flexibility, right? So sure, those sure. the way we manage people, uh, we have to have a better sense of that. And uh, I mean, inclusivity is a term which is used to describe all of that. So leaders have to be a lot more inclusive, uh, and the focus is to more on outcome. Uh, with, the, with the exception of what <laughs> Sundar Pichai recently said that reward the effort, not the outcome. So that's R and D word differently, or the topic differently, but. You know, mostly services, business, product businesses, uh, it is outcome based. So you give flexibility, uh, but have a clear agreement on uh, what is at the bottom line. And beside that, you give flexibility as much as possible. Does that make so, sense? Yeah, that, that actually helps contextualize what a lot of digital tools are providing. But if you don't have 
the right mindset, then those tools might not actually help us yield the right results. So, so as I said, basically, it's a, it's a very fine balance of human and technology. So both exactly. are good at a critical role, but uh, the, uh, on how well it complements each other would determine the success. Definitely, Vinay. And I think that's that's a core lesson out of this conversation also. So Vinay, I liked the point where you sort of emphasized the, the shift back of power is back towards the individual, towards the employee. And employee preferences are now dictating their choice to work or not work. You know, and this has led to companies look at employee experience completely differently. So Deepak, coming on to you, um, the, the aspect of an open talent network, for your, for example, the one that Repute has, how do you look at driving employee experience and, you know, helping employees get access to maybe different financial services or HRMS services so that HR leaders are able to curate that employee experience easily for their employees? Right. So uh, when we talk about the reputation of individual, the reputation of the company also where the employer, where he works with or the people that he's associated with are uh, something which say enhances or adds to his own reputation also. Now, when I'm going and probably asking for a loan or uh, access to say earned wages, which is that it's 15th of the month and I would want to probably withdraw my 15 days of salary or that. Uh, if people know that I work here uh, at this particular place and I am uh, earning so much and I'm still in employment, I haven't really put in my papers and all those things, it becomes very easy for me to do. It should become as easy as probably me asking for my uh, salary advance from my own company. There's a very simple example that can put out just because not just your company knows that you work here, but everybody in the world have a very reliable mechanism to know that you work here. And so everybody can take a call basis the same way which your company was able to. So in a closed system, which is your HR manager knew that you work at this company or people within your company knew that you work at this place and you earn so much. But now anybody whom you want to expose this information to can reliably know that this Deepak works at this company and this is what he's earning and this is what his, say, progress has been, etc. Based on that, they can judge. So suddenly the experience that is coming out has changed on that. Same as my data or my uh, say uh, performance thing what i have kind of projects that i've been working on etc if i can project those to let's say a learning and development company where they can chart out a path for me that again changes something where my growth is not just a management activity which is just in my hand i'm also partnering with various people because i'm giving them access to what i am working on so that or the kind of work i'm doing on so that tomorrow they can also help me in the Deepak, it will be best if you are using, uh, you should go through this course or maybe this will be helpful for it. Now imagine Deepak actually wants to enroll for that course, but does Deepak have a, a say training and development budget, which uh, say the organization is going to pay. Now the company can reach out to this organization to find out that Deepak wants to access this course. Are you okay to allow Deepak to do this? And they can directly raise this invoice with the company when it is happening. And I'm not really dependent on going with one or two partners that my company has all be uh, so tied up with. I can go to anybody because now anybody can reach out to my uh, organizer or my employer to say, ask for if I'm allowed to do this and probably raise an invoice there, which makes it very, very seamless. So the idea is, uh, is, is something, I think this was uh, a question asked from Sachin Tindulkar a lot of time. Uh, long back, he got a very mega deal in terms of sponsorship etc so what do you do and he said like for me now it means i can play freely i don't have to worry about all the other aspects of it everybody else is taking care of those aspects i can just focus on the game which i want i love i want to play so i think it is those kind of experiences where we have to create that i i want to code so i should be able to code now everything except around that should be taken care by somebody uh, automatically in the sense that a similar way a celebrated talent uh, let's say in sports would be doing. So they don't go around doing a lot of other works. It's like, uh, uh, where is my, say, kit coming from or how is my travel getting planned and all those things. Now, automatically, all those things are getting done at a more micro level in terms of that. This is a tool that can help you. This is a training that can help you. Or oh, you need financial help. You can take this. Probably this is a, a insurance that can be added to cover uh, your, say, family and other things. 
this is how you build your reputation in the space uh, which is now carried forward with that kind of work that you can get in future so uh, idea of a network would be to take it to a level where as an employee uh, i just focus on doing what i am doing and everything else around me is taken care uh, as uh, smooth uh, in a, as seamlessly as possible with this thank you thank you deepak for looking at you know how is actually an open talent network how it can actually facilitate uh, driving employee experience so thank you for that moving ahead when a uh, building on what deepak said of you know of an open talent network actually providing a seamless experience we've seen a similar problem being faced by hr leaders when it comes to having the right tools but not being able to create that employee experience that robust brand that 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 factor which keeps employees attracted and retained in the company what would you say are some best practices especially in the post pandemic world where companies can look at curating employee experience and ensuring that they are able to retain their important talent yeah so very good yeah <clears throat> so i think at present uh, the whole industry is looking at this hybrid this animal is still probably there a lot of unknown sort of questions is still uh, we don't have an answer so i can i can share the experience so so we had a conversation and did this um, so there was one view saying that why does uh, why doesn't hr send a mail they send a mandate by this date people have to come at least two days a week etc etc that was one way uh, but i think we realized that's not probably the best way so we said that basically um, let's have e at each program level project level which is whichever is the logical work unit at that level uh, the leader should have open discussion with the team saying this is what basically you're going through so there have been basically project with the customer escalation there is a clear trend of customer escalation is going up there are basically pieces of work there are some projects which are fairly stable so you know so knowledge is basically in the team and work is really streamlined so their degree for uh, need for collaboration is relatively lower so the approach we took is that uh, take the team into confidence and whatever the challenge put up front in front of them and say that we are going to do it together does that require basically coming to office frequently if the project um, if this is basically a development project and you're trying to build a, a platform which is completely cloud native right from scratch etc of course there's a lot more consultation discussions required to you know decide take so many design decisions etc there of course people themselves realize that you know, we have been working from home but uh, i mean such creative discussions somehow the vibes human vibes make huge difference so they, they themselves will agree Uh, some work is stable uh, team itself would by consensus say that okay, this is feasible so the point i'm saying is the first thing is basically the team culture say that uh, let's just sit together agree on what is the right thing to best thing to achieve what uh, object we have to achieve that's one second thing is uh, evolve a mechanism which really works for for the context of the work unit Uh, so the tools or mechanism to probably agree on how to fix accountability, who's going to do what, and what is the outcome expected, and rest basically leave for people to collaborate. So it's a combination of the practices and tools. But bottom line is that how do you basically create a, a sort of democratic environment, especially where it's not uh, the work has some complexity. Uh, so basis sure. work you decide that and. build on mechanics those mechanics show sure. them thank you thank you thank you for exploring that aspect also for our audience um moving ahead this will be my final question to both our panelists and to keep it short i would request uh, we can go uh, we can start with vinay and then we can have deepak's input on this what is the one key thing that you think hr leaders really need to start doing because we've been talking about a lot of changes that technology is bringing in we've been talking a lot of changes that hr leaders need to bring in but what according to you should be the one key perspective change or actionable that hr leaders need to implement moving ahead so we will start with you and deepak will go yeah. on to you after that so i think basically engagement uh, has all, always been there but that uh, 
the way engagement needs to happen or i would say the engagement deficit the risk of engagement deficit has gone up in the virtual world uh, you know so i would say the biggest concern or the biggest priority is to how to make sure and especially one of the biggest example is that people uh, and because of high attrition i think every company at least 19 industry would have at least 30% people who joined during pandemic those people have never seen they, they have not felt the physicality of the organization they didn't get a chance to meet people etc so so i think that number one agenda is how to build the real engagement and build that connection people to people connection Sure. Thank you, Vinay. Deepak, if you had anything to add, uh, I think I'll take up what Vinay had mentioned some time ago, which was, uh, uh, I think we we need to treat employee each employee uh, as an enterprise of one. It is everybody. We are working at a at a granularity of a single individual level now. We cannot say, oh, all of these team customer care, everybody, this is how it should work, or engineers, this is how it should work, field staff, this is how it should work. Uh, everybody has. their own set of aspirations and everybody need to be managed at a single aspiration level we cannot uh, build up uh, uh, large groups and drive everything as large groups it is like consumer preferences have moved to granularity of one same way uh, the service professionals whether has moved as a enterprise of one and we have to treat it like that that every individual is running their own enterprise and what would make them Uh, run their enterprise in the best possible manner. Uh, instead of saying that it's my enterprise and uh, this individual is serving my enterprise, it's not. I have an enterprise and this individual also have an enterprise, and both our enterprises need to work in a manner that uh, the together we are growing uh, each other as well. There is a relationship which is growing. So the moment we start looking at that every body is a business or enterprise in itself. and everybody needs to have a brand and a, a relationship and everything else on their own and that is a stage i think uh, uh, we'll have to get to now instead of uh, just driving it very very large cohorts and abstractions agreed deep completely and uh, with that i would like to end our uh, panel discussion thank you deepak and thank you vijay for your insightful uh, perspectives and your explanations on some of the trends that we are yet to see coming here now i'll take up some audience questions and we're getting a lot of those so deepak my first question to you it's a two part question firstly um, our audience really wants to know whether repute is what does uh, what differentiates repute talent network from other job networks that's the first part and second part what would you say are some of the core usps of repute talent network so we are not repute itself is not a job network jobs is like we are trying to put it out that this is a entire uh, management of life cycle of a talent starting from whether it is uh, hiring or onboarding or management during or growing the talent and maybe separation everything else is taken care and repute is just connecting systems it's not only really, the use cases are being built on those systems which have got created so how is it different the first difference is uh, if a job portal or let's say a social network or a professional network uh, that we exist today is really their resumes that is something i wrote myself i claimed various things i have put them out so today what we have is this uh, their large job is discoverability that somebody is able to find me uh, if if they want to reach out and just on the talent acquisition space itself we put it Uh, at repute it would change to it's not what i am saying i have done or is this is what others are saying and that makes a lot of difference if resume was today you get it and after that we are verifying the details of those whether they were correct by sending it somebody else now we are talking about is uh, it's not uh, let's say deepak who said that i have worked at nestway but nestway has said that deepak has worked at nestway and say so citrus fair said deepak has worked at nestway and these were his roles and everything else now that's very different first of all in the uh, uh, reliability aspect itself that yes i know that these activities have uh, uh, the data points that are coming are more of uh, degree not a resume the degree given by institution is like yes you have done this job that is degree versus a resume where i claim that i have done this kind of thing so uh, a very core difference is that itself second as i told it's not just about uh, finding job or something else it's it's lot more Uh, then just 
me putting up my profile it is also uh, the shared information which is coming from the network which it might be from my peers uh, who have worked with me and my past employers and uh, so my profile is going to be way richer than what generally is going to be available the end goal for us would be that somebody is able to uh, say search in a, a repute engine uh, that i need java engineers and there's a list of java engineers in the stack order of the relevance to the kind of job that i am doing in my company now both parts are important the skill on the other side is also important and what i am doing is also important and based on that there's a search which gives probably these are the people who are the best people to actually uh, fit into the organization by uh, culture or by experience or whatever it is so those are the kind of things which we would want to take it and that is possible only when uh, there is a, a data existing beyond the silos that they are currently lying and that is where we are trying to connect the systems so that systems can speak to each other and create those experiences exactly and hence the open nature of our tal of your tal so thank yeah. you for that uh, deepak um, because of time constraints we'll be taking one more audience question and this will be directed to you vinay um, so we really want our audience wants to know how do you address the problem of employee retention in a post pandemic so again i think it goes back to the trust part most <clears throat> so in the short term i think the the salary have created a lot of basically uh, disruption i would say last few quarters and uh, at this stage i think where the global economy is, is heading towards is a matter of speculation there are various uh, point of views people have uh, but i i think the ultimate prince in principal economy that whatever is a demand and supply equilibrium it will probably take its own course and and reach there so yeah compensation is is a temporary disruption i believe uh, but at the end of it basically uh, the whole thing would be in the bitra so will i have a good career in the company or whatever i do in this company is going to enhance my employability so and enhance my value so that will remain the biggest questions which will make people stick and of course there's there's one side and there are basically i would say lot of individuals uh, who who basically take a decision that career is important but life is more important right so if i get some my personal choices the company is able to match that i'm happy to probably have some compromise on the compensation of the factors so net net basically the value proposition that the employee is looking for value proposition which company is offering and uh, Uh, again, I, I'll pick up from Deepak is that uh, those there's a mass customization. So how we understand, but we have to find ways to understand what those value uh, value propositions sought by each person, and the closer you can match, uh, the bigger success you would have of relationship between employee and employer. Thank you, thank you, Vinay, for giving us a short brief look at it because I'm sure it's a problem which is an ongoing problem, especially. in the current world but i i like you helped us put a good perspective on it so i think we still have time for just one quick question and this question is for you deepak uh, when you talk about open talent networks how do you think it can actually help support sustainable and inclusive business growth uh, so two important factors of business today the, the this earlier it used to be land labor capital i think the land part has gone out to in, at least in a lot of knowledge work so labor and capital basically human talent and the financial capital so we are talking about something which is almost 50% or more than 50% important so sustainable yeah. business growth is where we are looking at how do we get the best utilization of uh, people that we have how do we align them uh, to what organization wants by tapping into what are their best internal motivations and those best internal motivations then uh, are something which we have to understand we have to hire the right kind of people today the talent market is very very inefficient market uh, if you look at it uh, when i was just uh, telling about the compensation uh, say thing that has happened today how difficult it is for somebody like me to like anybody goes to the market how does he find out what is his right compensation he has to take an offer from one company then has to go to another company and take an offer from them and he keeps repeating this process till the time there is somebody who does not better it anymore so that is the place you that is how you are finding out what is your true value today uh, it could have been very very easy to generate the ecosystem that does not have a efficiencies on this this is very inefficient ecosystem so if we are going to create 
uh, more efficient ecosystem we are saving time in trying to get the best person to get the job uh, to do it lot of uh, employers are not in a position where they are saying oh, i don't want to pay him so much i think our problem lot of time is i do not know whether this is the right thing to give or not because the moment we say that yes this is something we are very happy to get somebody on board if he is going to create the value more than what you are going to pay as a business uh, uh, creating a sustainable value we are talking about that is that employee is creating more value than probably what organization is paying uh, so that there is a greater value created for the business by his contribution or her contribution on that so a lot of it would be depending on creating or removing the inefficiencies of finding the right talent and rewarding the right talent so that they give their best to uh, take the organization forward uh, i think uh, probably for me it would be that that can change uh, to kind of continuous growth in that and uh, as a as a individual for me also my let's say you hire the best person today what happens is he is very good at interviewing he you we onboarded him after coming in will he give his best we don't know this is a internal yeah. motivation question i may very well slack for a year because this is a year where i am preparing for my further education and and at the end of it if because my reputation here has gone for a toss i'll just move out and probably move to another company and get a job again because i'm good at cracking interviews i'll still go ahead with that so uh, having this long term view on who am i and trying to work towards that as a individual is what is going to add value to the organization as well because then i am giving my best to the organization to try to make the organization better thank you thank you for looking at it uh, holistically deeper than actually looking at breaking down sustainable growth and linking it to having the right employees on board is very necessary in today's world so thank you everyone thank you deeper thank you okay, for joining us for this very insightful conversation With this, we are going to wrap up our session for the day. We would like to thank our partner, the group, for them for helping us curate these conversations, and our speaker, Dr. Vinay and Deepa, to join us today and share some of their insights and help us create better practices. Thank you. It's been a pleasure hosting you all. Do stay tuned to your inbox for details of our upcoming other events and virtual learning sessions. Also, please feel free to share your feedback in the room posted on the comment section. Have a great day and thank you to all. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Vinay. Yeah. Thanks, Deepak. Thank